Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Fox Clan Daimyo from Rising Sun. This is actually a pretty good one. I was really excited because I figured I'd just paint them, you know, all red and a little bit of gray and then almost be done. It ends up being a bit more than that. We'll go through it. Um, but first I actually want to hit another point that you might be interested in. So this is the Earth Dragon from Rising Sun and I happen to have an extra one. And so I figured, you know, I just hit a milestone uh, over on Patreon for a funding and I like to kind of celebrate it by giving back. So how about I paint this Earth Dragon up and then send it out to somebody on Patreon? I think that'd be kind of a cool thing to do. I think somebody would really like just to kind of have this. If you have the Rising Sun game, you can use it. If you don't, as you can see, it's pretty big. It could be used as like a... Uh, Kind of a display piece, uh, kind of a miniature statue, or uh, whatever else. You can sell it when I'm famous. I don't know. It's whatever. Either way, I just, I really want to say thanks to all my patrons. You guys are awesome, and I can't wait to meet more of you, get to know more of you, and uh, eventually give this to one of you. So if you're interested in getting this miniature for yourself, if you want to see if, you know, perhaps that will happen, and there are other rewards that are more guaranteed to happen, you can go ahead and check my description below for a link to my Patreon. Anyway, enough of that, let's get to it. As always, we're going to start out just by cleaning the miniature. This is just kind of little little bits that need to be cleaned up, whether it's a mold line or maybe um, right here. This is where they kind of poured the plastic in and where it, it, it left out. Sometimes the, um, the little tiny cylinder of plastic breaks off and creates an any or an Audi, kind of like a belly button. Um, so you kind of have to trim that a little bit. And uh, otherwise, some minor mold lines. Overall, this one was pretty easy and pretty quick. It wasn't it wasn't terrible at all. I never really struggled in any of the spots. Uh, we're gonna fill that um, that um, any out with a little bit of uh, some some gap filler later. So here I am. This is the liquid green stuff by Citadel. There's a lot of different um, things you can use here. They're typically all green, but just scrape it on and it'll dry off and uh, and be just fine. And then you just prime over it like normal. Okay, so here I am priming in gray as normal. And then we will start with the Evil Sun's Scarlet. That's my kind of base coat red of choice. It's one of my favorite reds. I really like the color. Um, I, I would like darker reds more, but this is this is a fantastic red. And not normally one I necessarily base in, just because it's so bright. A lot of times I would actually use this as a highlight, but I'm gonna have a red wash later to kind of darken it down a little bit. So for now, we're just gonna cover about 80% of the miniature here. Um, it's a pretty light color, so which makes it fairly easy to paint over, so you don't have to be super careful. Like if you if you get some on that um on that foot that's poking out right there, that's fine. You know, don't don't sweat it. Um. That being said, feel free to, you know, at least be a little careful, right? It'll just kind of speed things along. Um, it, it, un honestly, you're not doing any fiddly bits except for um, kind of towards his belt. Uh, at, at that point, it's it's a little small and like kind of in that those little areas there. But otherwise, pretty simple stuff. So it, again, this is why I thought it would just be super easy. We'd just paint over it and be fine. Um, but uh, <laughs> there's, you know, these daimyo just have so many... Uh, details that it, it it it's really hard to judge how long a miniature will take um, and and uh, with the daimyo you don't really want to rush it right if you're gonna rush it maybe do some of the bushi rushed or something like that um, there's some monsters that you could probably rush through uh, pretty okay uh, like like the Jiminju would be one I think that you could whip out really quick you know just painting the tree super quick and easy but the panda perhaps a sacred warrior but these daimyos, they have almost the the most bored time, right? Because they're almost always on the board, unless you're like killing them on purpose or something like that. And so it's really the and it's the leader of your unit, right? And so or your clan. So you really want to give it the detail and the time and effort and do a good job, and uh, you will be highly rewarded because these sculpts are amazing. Uh, as you know, as you've been following along here, they're they're just really good, really fun to paint. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed this one too. There are some ropes here, by the way. You see me kind of avoiding it. I don't actually care that much. And in fact, uh, on the other one, I just painted right over them. You're going to paint it with a dark color later, and it will paint over that red in one coat. You don't got to worry about it. 
just just paint over it. It's it's not a big deal. In fact, if you if you try to avoid little things like that, a lot of times you won't quite get to it. So you're gonna paint the dark, but then you have to come back with the red and then paint towards it again. And because it's it's like cinched on him, it should be shadowed. So then you have to put the base coat and then the wash and then highlight it up and just paint over it. You'll be fine. Now this red, again, with the concept art, especially with Adrian Smith, he really likes to do some odd highlighting and uh, object source lighting and, or, or I guess where like the lighting's coming, you know, obviously from somewhere else and it really changes almost the color of the cloth as opposed to just the, you know, the highlight level. Um, and so I decided to just do it all one red. I'm not messing with multiple reds here. And honestly, that makes it kind of simpler too. It's kind of nice. So the hair is going to be the same as the tassels, which is going to be the same as every layer of his dress skirt thing i don't know what these people wear it's not a kimono I, I don't know i don't know what they wear i uh, the cloth anyway so all of that's going to be the same evil sun scarlet and uh so it, it's kind of nice it, it's that instant gratification that i like where you, because so much of the miniatures are already painted you're like oh look i'm making like really good progress already even though as you can see in the timestamp, we're just getting started okay so by that point, because it took so long, you can go back to where you started and put on the caribou crimson or whatever it's called, the red wash from Citadel or any red wash, whether you got the army painter or Vallejo or whatever, doesn't matter. Just slap that on there. It'll look great. Um, and it, again, you just don't want to do it right where you painted. So by the time you get to, you know, as you retrace your steps, it'll, the paint will be dry. So there's no loss in time. Uh, if there, if there was, if for some reason, maybe you're in a more humid place than I am, uh, then, you know, by all means, you know, do the next step or, or just wait, you know, go, go, go get a soda, go make a sandwich. I don't know. Do something while the paint dries. You don't want to waste too much time though, right? I always try to, you know, always be productive and not just have the miniature sitting there drying because, uh, that's boring. So again, I cover everything red, the tassels, all of it with red. We're going to highlight it up later. Um, and, and speaking of the highlight and that, that's going to happen here soon, but as always, you can highlight as much as you want. Just add another layer and you should be fine. Uh, I, I tend to not highlight a whole lot. I think it's, it's, it's a bit more natural, uh, but it also makes it a bit darker. So it's just up to you. Moving on to natural steel. So that wash will take a while to dry, even where I live. And so, um, I'm going to let it dry, but I'm just going to move on to something else. And this natural steel is a great kind of base coat for silver. What The reason I like it, and I would compare it close to like Lead Belcher from Citadel, is because it's not too dark, but it's still dark enough to where I can highlight it. So it, you can get really dark, like rough iron or, you know, pig iron, tough iron, all those kind of irons that are like almost like dark gray or black. And that's great to highlight as well. Trust me. However, um, it, 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 it's a much different color, right? Cause it's just, is so dark. This natural steel, um, you could probably call this plain steel, right? It's just, it's this boring, typical, you know, silver. And, and what's nice about that is that means you can highlight it up. I think really good and it still has this really good color range to it. And I want to try and actually, um, highlight it to where the, you know, like as, as if the light was hitting it. So, um, there are people that can explain this better, but essentially on a cylinder or on anything round, the highlight that you see isn't necessarily directly from the light per se. It's from your point of view looking at it because of the, the bent. Um, how it bends. Um, again, that's probably a terrible explanation, but uh, you'll kind of see how I highlight it up and kind of my thought process behind that. I don't know if I'm right or not, but it, it looks good to me. So that's good enough for this channel. And by the way, while I'm going through this, just note that I used the double zero and triple zero from Windsor Newton series seven, almost exclusively on this miniature. I get the regiment brush out a little bit for the base and uh, I think a little bit of the wash. But other than that, the, a double zero will serve you just fine here. The, the reason I don't do a one, because I would do a one normally, is just because with these daimyo a lot of times, especially when they have their arms in front of them, I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to get the belly of the brush on like his arms and stuff and I don't want that so I, I tend to avoid that if I can with a, a little bit of a smaller brush. Next up is dark tone. This is again just for the the silver. Just darken it up and then we'll highlight it back and we're actually going to highlight it back even more. So two levels of highlights. Make it really stand out. Make it look good. Again this is another uh, you know, 10, 20% of the miniature here is just as silver. So it's a very predominant part and it, you know, we want to make it look good. And it's got this beautiful texture that this wash just instantly seeps through. Anytime you see anything with rivets like that, slap a wash on it. It looks instantly better, even if you didn't highlight it up.
Okay, so now that wash is, is dry and I need to wait for the silver wash, the dark tone to dry. So let's get Evil Sun Scarlet back out and bring this back up to the base coat. Now, again, this isn't going to be super noticeable, especially just here on the camera with kind of, you know, the lights on it and everything. But this will, the thing is with fabric is you want the transition to be very subtle. With a lot of things like metal and stuff like that, especially like with little plates, you can do a rougher highlight and it still looks good. Uh, it actually just looks like it's reflecting light or something like that. But for the cloth, you really want to bring it back up to the base coat from the wash, even if the wash didn't change it that much. Um, it, it'll just make it look a lot better, and it takes almost no time here. So really, I'm just tracing all of the, the raised portions, and I'm covering on the little um, puffs on his uh, upper waist or upper legs, I guess. Um, I'm just hiding the raised portion on the lower flowy parts. I'm getting about 80% coverage there. So the shadows are still have the shade, but otherwise it's actually most of the evil sun scarlet now. Next up, we're going to add a little bit of white into that Evil Sun Scarlet, just a little bit. If I was going to do more, instead of doing white, I would have actually done an orange and mixed it in there. Like, I would have chosen, like, maybe light orange from Vallejo. I've done that before, and that works out really good. The problem is, if you add white, you're going to get pink. And sometimes, maybe you want it to be a little pink, but I tend to like it to go shift a little bit closer to the orange. But if you just add a little bit of white, I think it still keeps that red really good. It does that little bit extra highlight. So you can already see, even on this camera, uh, a little bit more of that texture showing up, a little bit more of the folds. It just makes it look a bit more natural. If you wanted deeper shadows, you could have done a dark tone or a, a Nolan Oil versus the um, or the red uh, the red wash. I, again, a red wash isn't going to show up as strongly here with this Evil Sun Scarlet. And again, I didn't lay it in heavy either, and that's fine. I wanted it to be mostly smooth, especially considering the concept art. Again, the, the red is quite bright, and so I didn't want to darken them down too much. And uh, hey, I do enough dark anyway. For these flowing tassels, I did not highlight every single one. Instead, where it lifts up and at the top is the only place I did it. Uh, otherwise, it, it just kind of stayed with the wash and the Evil Sun Scarlet. I didn't add an extra level of highlight. Right now, we're back onto Natural Steel, and again, this is just to get... Um, most of them. I tried not to hit them all, uh, so you have some. That way it makes it seem like some are perhaps angled slightly different, um, which would make sense because uh, there's a person wearing it, right? So it's going to be at a different angle and, and the clinks or the, the plates may not, you know, fit exact or anything like that. But I got a good, you know, 80-90% of them there. Just I didn't quite highlight them all. Then we're going to get the plate male metal, and this is a much brighter silver, and this is kind of where I, I talked about the reflective portion. So if you notice, I'm not doing it exact, but I'm mostly just doing it down the middle there. And, and so that'll really focus, and then of course on the top of top of those ridges. That'll pop out the ridges a lot, but then it also gives a kind of sense of the curvature of that plate, right? So it's not flat, so it looks like it actually is highlighted a little bit more on the middle, and then maybe on the end like it's angled out a little bit because it's kind of going over his his uh, uh, robes there. And you can see I did the same on uh, pretty much all of the bits. So his like shoulder pad things, again, just kind of a little bit down the middle there. And it just makes it seem like it's not quite you know, flat and straight. Um, and that and, you know, the, your only other option is to, uh, I guess, either highlight them all that way or highlight none of them that much or maybe just do it haphazardly. Either way, I think it looks really good there. Next we have Necromancer's Cloak, and this is going to be for a lot. I mean, he's going to be almost done painted after this when it comes to like base coats, like just getting color on the miniature, which is really nice because sometimes you don't get all of the, all of the, um, the colors on there for quite some time, and so he just looks half finished all the time. Again, this one you always get this gratification, which is really nice. Um, but this Necromancer's Cloak is going to do the pull. It's going to do um, several other things. We'll get to him in time. By the way, the... This is a dark gray, so you're going to want to be careful just because it, it will be harder to, let's say, paint the red over it, right? So if you get a little bit on his robe, that's going to kind of suck. Though, I guess we're about to get a little bit on his robe because we're going to, we're going to do the details. So let's, uh, let's talk again once we get to that point.
Okay, so here I am doing the, the kind of detail work. And again, a lot of these Rising Sun miniatures are just going to have you practicing drawing circles. Um, I, again, especially with the Daimyo, I highly suggest trying it. My free hand sucks too. It's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just kind of has to give the illusion. If you recall on the, um, the Lotus Daimyo, I didn't do the Dragon Ball stars. I just did little dots and it was good enough. I think it looked great. I think a lot of you would agree with that. And so you don't have to like kill yourself trying to think you need a bristle with like, five strands of hair on it or something like that on the brush uh, it just it kind of haphazardly puts the circles the biggest point here i think is trying to make all the circles around the same size you don't want small and large ones if you can help it you want to kind of make them seem a bit more uniform unless you're really trying to do a kind of a polka dot bikini look <laughs> but i doubt that's the case um so and again this is just on the lowest robe here it's not kind of everywhere it's just um just on this lower part, which helps because the, the texture on the top parts would make it pretty difficult. Okay, so we're going to get the Evil Sun Scarlet out while it's already on our palette. A wet palette for me doesn't have to be though. And we're just going to draw kind of like a, an asterisk in the in the middle there. We're just going to kind of draw uh, an X or four lines through um, at, at, at kind of an angle. So it's not quite like a, you don't want it a plus, right? That would look, I think, a little bit silly. And this is perfectly fine to get the illusion again you're just trying to get a sense of that design um i've seen people do you know like swirls with dots on the side or anything like that just to give it a little bit of a design it makes it kind of nice now we have the shining silver out this is a much brighter silver this is going to be, end up being almost white um if you look at the concept art it's a very bright bright blades that he has part of it's the extreme highlight on it but overall it's just a very bright silver so we're we're going much brighter here and it's a big it's a nice clash especially against that necromancer's cloak that's on the pole and his kind of tassels there on either part of the blade So now we're actually going to add white to the silver. This is plain white to the metallic paint. Yes, it makes it not as sparkly. Yes, I'm actually happy it's not as sparkly. That's really sparkly anyway. And really, I'm just, I'm essentially doing almost what you would do for like a non-metallic metal highlight, um, but with, you know, true, true metallic here. So, and again, it's going to be very, very bright here. So I do apologize for that. But essentially, um, it, wherever it curves and angles, the mold on this uh, actually is very good. So you can really see where it is. Um, I'm just painting with this kind of very much whiter, brighter silver, and you'll see it much better at the end of the video. Uh, so, you know, be on the lookout for that. I'll, I'll call it out when we get there. Next up, I'm also taking the white onto the Necromancer cloak, um, and then just doing a little bit of detail on that belt there, make it look a little bit nicer. And then uh, I'm going to do that on the, the other portions of the tassel, the scabbard, and the pole as well, just to kind of... Um, I can give that one level highlight. I think that's good enough for, for this dark color here. Next up, Greedy Gold. Again, this is one of my favorite golds. I really like it because it takes a wash really well. If you put a brown wash on here or even an orange wash on here, it looks fantastic. Um, so I prefer the brown, um, but and that's just me with this color here but either way you just put that on there and then you highlight it up with like a regular gold so a brighter gold and that that distinction between the the um metal and then the wash and then a higher metal is really nice so you know how on the on the fabric i said you want to really blend the highlights in you almost want the opposite on um on metals right because they're supposed to be shiny and slightly reflective as well as just kind of a natural highlight so if you put the wash on and then instead of putting greedy gold back on we're just going to go straight to gold which is brighter it makes it really pop out those details it makes it look really nice uh so kind of similar to what i did with the white on the blades so and and then it's one less step so that's cool too if i can skip a step i will
So now we have the soft tone out. Now I did soft tone. You could go darker than this if you wanted to. Um, I still wanted it to be fairly bright and so I, I just left it with the soft tone. But you can get as dark as you want with that um, brown wash. If you went with like an Agrax or shade or something much darker, you might want to bring it back up to um, the the greedy gold. That It's up to you. Try it with just the gold. See if you like that kind of pop. I would add a pop, that's for sure, to those highlights. If you don't, then just go over with greedy gold, no problem. So here's that gold, that long-awaited gold I've talked about. Again, I didn't go back to greedy gold. This is just gold. And as you can see, I'm just tracing over those uh, shapes. And what this is doing is making those shapes really stand out. So the design is all there and it makes it look great. Uh, I, again, I really, really like it. And I'm taking the time to actually go over the detail. I'm, I'm not, I'm not winging it. I'm not dry brushing it. I am actually just kind of tracing it. It doesn't take very long. It's actually quite easy to do. Um, for these those fins on the side, I'm just getting kind of the, the, the top angle portion of it there or on the other side the bottom angle. Again, it's kind of that non-metallic metal idea of the shite re the light reflecting off both sides because of the reflection and whatnot. Um, but for the, the detail work that has the design patterns, definitely do it, especially on the blade. A lot of people are going to be looking at that blade. It's a big part. Of, he's really holding it out. That's going to be one of the focal points of the miniature. Next up, we have basic skin tone. Now, you could... I debated on this because looking at the concept art, it was very hard for me to pick a appropriate f uh, flesh color. Now, this is obviously too bright, but I am going to wash it down and then do minimal highlights, hoping that that's dark enough. In hindsight, you could probably start with a, a, a darker color than basic flesh tone. Um, Caddy and flesh tone, maybe even. I mean, that's pretty dark. You'd want to highlight it up, I think, from that point. But you certainly could. Uh, in fact, you might even be able to get away with not doing a wash if you started with that. Um, or you could paint it with basic skin tone too. I mean, it doesn't doesn't have to be exact. It's just, um, I, I think this fits probably the other daimyos I've painted more, but the concept art I think makes them look a little bit darker. So, you know, is what it is. And you could always do a, a different wash than the flash wash, but I'd be careful because of how light this base coat is. So here's the flesh wash. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, I think f the lightest brown you can find for basic skin tone is the best. Um, that being said, I've used um, Seraphim Sepia, which is kind of an orange hue to it, which is really nice. It brings a little bit of life into the skin, which I really like. Um, but for this little bit, I just chose a flesh wash and I think it works just fine. Back with the basic skin tone, again, minimal highlights here. So just kind of on the cheek ridge, on the nose, on the bottom of the chin to help pop that out. And then of course, the kind of top of his head, you really want to kind of highlight that um, uh, forehead. But do note that his hair is going to be very dark. And so you don't want it to look, you know, <laughs> almost black and white either, right? You, you still kind of want a little bit of that, that shadow there, especially almost at the ridge line. I think that really helps um, transition to the hair really nicely. We got just white out now. There's a few bits of white. He's wearing these socks with sandals down here. So get his little toes uh, poking out there. Uh, he, he doesn't want them to get cold, so he's wearing this sock. And then he has these little bit of white gloves here. You could skip this step and just keep it black if or uh, red if you want. This is not very noticeable. But again, like I said, if you're painting the diamond, you may as well do it right. And he already got the white out for the sock anyway. May as well give him some, some little, you know, fingerless gloves here.
All right, moving on to the black. Now this always scares me. I always end up doing this because so many people have black hair with miniatures, it seems. And I try to paint the top of the miniature last. So if I'm, I'm touching it, it's not, you know, ruining the paint or anything. But, you know, you're messing with a very, very dark black here. And it, the miniature is mostly done. He's almost finished now. So don't mess up. <laughs> if you don't mess up, it's fine, right? <laughs> just, uh, just take your time. You know, again, I am using a bit of a smaller brush here, just trying to uh, make sure I don't have a, a, you know, a big belly on the brush that's gonna, you know, have a whole lot of paint on it because it's loaded up and, you know, I'm gonna accidentally get it with the side or anything like that. You might also notice the back of the pole I missed. I'm gonna paint it off, off camera, that greedy gold, and do the same wash and everything on that. Okay, we also got to get the eyes. So just, I'm doing the eyes before the eyebrows. Um, that way the eyebrows don't throw me off here. And they have really thick um, mold lines, uh, like or they have very thick molded eyebrows, uh, which is kind of odd. It's not what I would have done, um, but uh, you know, that it would have looked bad, I think, just painting them on the ridges as well, like they plucked them. So this is black gray. I don't typically do a I don't typically do a wash with my black hair, especially, I mean, it's not going to really show up anyway. But the black gray from Vallejo, if you don't have it, I highly suggest it. In fact, I will link to that below. It is awesome for highlighting black for hair because it is as dark a gray as I can find that I've seen. Uh, darker than Necromancer's Cloak, that's for sure. And so it's really, really nice, perfect for these kind of highlights because you don't want the hair to end up looking gray. Right, you just want it to be black with a little bit of highlight, and this is where the black gray from Vallejo comes in. It's a great color. I'm also going to use that to paint in these ropes. The reason I didn't do this necromancer cloak, I could have, but I figured this is just different enough to where it, a, again, adding those. You know how I didn't change the red because I felt like it was all the same color with the blacks or the grays. This really just adds a little bit of variance to it. So this is just kind of underneath the the arms and then around his, his arms. Now this Rakarth flesh here, I couldn't see what color, I don't think this is even in the concept art, he has like a little bit of a shirt or a little bit of a vest here. Um, and I really, I hadn't decided what to paint it for a while and I got to this Rakarth flesh to paint this rope that I'm doing now and I figured, you know what, I'll pop that over, make it a little bit of, of a brighter shirt too, it'll kind of uh, brighten up the mini a little bit, uh, which is I think kind of nice, it looks it looks good, it looks natural. This rope, by the way, is only slightly um, molded onto the head, so you're going to have to hand draw it a little bit, and the part where it's tied into his hair is a complete mess, so just paint it however you think makes it look good. And that's just going to have to be good enough. Unfortunate, I hate painting on detail, but there's no really way around it. Okay, so castle in green. I want to go ahead and put this on the base now so it can dry so that I can, uh, because I'm almost done with the miniature. And so by the time I'm finished with the miniature, his base will be ready and I can just go to town on it. So this is just a green undercoat for if it, the grass coverage, when you see through it, you're not seeing you know, a gray primed uh, base, but instead this green underneath, it'll help blend it all together. All right. So I struggled with this and the concept art, it looks like he has like a bone mask thing but on the miniature this is obviously hair like it's very much hair it is not bone and they're not straight like in the in the concept art this is very different from the concept art so i i, I was i was tempted to do the black however first of all i wanted it to kind of match the concept art and second of all i thought you know what it'd be kind of cool if he had a white beard with his you know black hair or whatever like uh, i don't know how that works but it looks really nice i think it, it very much makes the miniature a little bit more interesting a little bit more complex if it has been black especially just around his face like that it may i think would have made it look a bit odd so again, doing just a little bit of a wash here. Um, I don't bother highlighting it up. It's so minor anyway. I think it looks great just like that. So the Fox Clan I'm gonna do in light orange. This is this is actually a pretty good match for the back of the bottom of the, the base. You can actually see it a little bit there when I shifted my hand. Um, this is pretty close to their clan color. So I'm gonna paint all the Fox Clan in this color. So if you're painting the Fox Clan, you're following along, make sure you have that color. I think it's a good match. 
All right, so again, this is a daimyo, so I'm doing kind of the bottom rim, and I have not found a good way to do this. Um, this is just kind of a time-consuming struggle where I'm going to do my best to not to make it as consistent as possible, and uh, and then just touch it up off off camera. So I'm going to get that that uh, light orange back, and then kind of make it a bit more even. But do note that, again, this is very minor and it's noticeable, right? It, it, it is definitely noticeable from a full base where you, you get that kind of black rim. However, it's not like, it's not the focal point at all. And so it doesn't have to be super exact here. It's going to be on a, on a, on a game board here. This is just to signify as a game piece that this is the Daimyo in Rising Sun and has certain rules and isn't, um, you know, as something else. This is Battlefield Summer Undergrowth. I've never used this before. Um, actually, I used a little bit, uh, like a pine needle for the uh, near Ona for Rising Sun. Um, but I'm really excited to use this on this one. Uh, so this is just some watered down uh, Elmer's glue, just some white school glue here. If you water it down, it's easy to brush on and it doesn't goop up as much. Um, I wanted this clan, again, I try to base each one differently, each clan. It helps distinguish them, especially as they're painted, so they all kind of match and look a little bit more uniform. So I'm making this almost a jungly, kind of very bushy, um, grassy, very green base, um, which I thought would be kind of interesting. And again, it's, it's unique from the other uh, clans that I've done. So I'm going to struggle to open the Citadel grass here. Uh, I like the color of this and how long the Citadel grass is. Uh, sometimes you get some that are really long and sometimes ones that are really short, especially if you got like the flock version. This one's really nice. So you just, you know, tap it off and then you're good to go. All right, so then we're going to varnish the miniature. As always, I varnish it at the end and... This is it. This is the final miniature. I hope you guys liked this. I really like how he turned out. If you see that red, do you see how smooth that transition is? I'm actually quite proud of that. But also, as you can tell, it does a world of difference if you put that base coat down first. Looks fantastic. But then that drastic difference on the metal, I think, really pops out, especially as it turns here and starts to shine. Right there, you can see it. That looks awesome. I love it. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope this uh, helped you out in your painting endeavors, or maybe just found it some entertaining, or maybe just like the sound of my voice. Either way, guys, if you liked it, press the like button, give it this video a thumbs up. I always appreciate it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'm actually going to be bringing in a uh, prototype to Archon Studios um, Vanguard of War Heroes vs. Zombies edition. So I'll be painting one of those for you so you can see exactly what kind of miniatures you're going to get for your money if you decide to back. Um, then I'm going to swap over to some Eternal War stuff. So I got a prototype of that. You guys voted over on Patreon. That was a public vote. And you guys voted for the Demon Vanguard. That's the big honking 80 millimeter demon that has like this huge fire sword and whatnot. So I'm going to paint him up. Expect him soon too. And again, with that Earth Dragon for Rising Sun, if you want a chance to, you know, win that or maybe just help support the channel or, uh, you know, talk with, with us and goof off over on Discord or any of the other rewards I have over there, feel free to check the Patreon link below. Thanks guys. And I'll talk to you soon.